let's talk about Nathan Clifford. He was a Supreme Court justice in the late 19th century. In 1880, Nathan Clifford suffered a stroke, and because of his poor health, no one around him thought he could still do the job. In fact, another Supreme Court justice, Samuel Miller, even wrote, Clifford became a babbling idiot, though his tongue framed words, there was no sense in them. And this left the Supreme Court with a huge problem. Even with his mental faculty so clearly impaired, Nathan Clifford refused to step down. And that's because he had been appointed by Democrat James Buchanan, but at the time of his stroke, the president was Republican Rutherford B. Hayes. And it's not like anyone could just force Nathan Clifford to step down. After all, a Supreme Court justice serves for life. It says so right here in the Constitution. It's right here. Nope, maybe it's, maybe it's over here. Okay, turns out the Constitution doesn't say anything about term limits for judges or Supreme Court justices. All it says is, judges shall hold their offices during good behavior. Turns out good behavior, yes, unfortunately spelled with a U, is the Constitution's only guidance about how long a justice should serve on the Supreme Court. Never in my life have I heard a man speak more like a fool. Today, that might seem kind of bonkers to a lot of people. In a recent AP poll, 67% of Americans say they are in favor of Supreme Court term limits. After all, a Supreme Court justice is the ultimate referee of all US law. And even if they're in poor health or facing mental decline, or they're just far older than most Americans think that they should be, a Supreme Court justice can just keep on serving. Plus, the justices themselves can influence who replaces them by strategically timing their own departures from the court. And right now... Confidence in the Supreme Court yeah. is lower <laughs> now than it has ever been. So here's what I want to know. Why did the Founding Fathers ever think it was a good idea to give judges lifetime tenure? Did this part of the American experiment have its desired outcome? And what would it take for term limits to actually be implemented for the first time in the court's 232 year history? First, we have to go back a while. A lot of the rights that we enjoy today as Americans go all the way back to this 13th century English document, the Magna Carta. But for this topic, we're gonna start a little bit later, the 1701 English Act of Settlement. The main point of this law was to ensure that the throne stay in Protestant hands but it included a peculiar passage about judges. A judge's job was valid quam deo se bene gesserent, which in medieval Latin means as long as they behave well. And if they didn't, they can be removed either by impeachment or by a vote by the Houses of Parliament, as opposed to the whims of whichever king or queen sat on the throne. The English Act of Settlement could be an inspiration taken one step further. The very high bar of impeachment and impeachment only could remove a judge. This way, they could give their opinions of the law free from fear of retribution. And quam deo se bene gesserent began to take on a new English phrase, good behavior. People thought that that guy, John Adams, was so smart that they all asked him for his thoughts on government. So in 1776, he wrote a great pamphlet with admittedly a very boring name. He literally lays out the institutional architecture for creating an independent judiciary, which included life tenure for judges rather than allowing them to be removed at will. That's Professor Scott Gerber, professor of law at Ohio Northern University, who has written extensively about colonial judicial tenure. And despite lifelong tenure being this huge controversial thing today, back then, it was nearly unanimous. Everyone was in agreement that it was the only way for judges and justices to stay independent. Founding fathers who normally couldn't agree on anything all thought that this was kind of a no-brainer. They all agreed that Adams had it right. Even though he wasn't there, he was in uh, England, they went with his theory. And that led James Madison to write the words, judges shall hold their offices during good behavior directly into the new US Constitution and not much else on the matter. Of course, that was a long time ago. One of the modern arguments against continuing with this life tenure is that they didn't expect someone to serve for 40 years and serve until their 90s, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, about that. We've had two justices serve on the Supreme Court until they were 90, 
and many more have served well into their 80s. 16 justices have served for more than 30 years, and the average number of years that justices have served on the Supreme Court is 16. In 1993, the New York Times wrote that Justice Clarence Thomas once said that he planned to stay on the Supreme Court until the year 2034, or for 43 years. Why that long specifically? The liberals made my life miserable for 43 years, and I'm going to make their lives miserable for 43 years. That's of course assuming there's a Republican president in 2034. Because remember, justices don't necessarily retire when they want to, they retire when it's politically expedient to do so, or at least they try to. And even if the court is supposed to be apolitical, court confirmations are anything but. This year, Bill Clinton appointed Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer retired at the age of 83, now that the White House is in Democratic hands. Breyer's replacement, 51-year-old Ketanji Brown Jackson, could serve on the Supreme Court for as many as four decades, and that's true for much of the modern court. James Madison did write that Supreme Court justices could be impeached, but that's an extremely high bar to reach, and it's written that way on purpose. Only one Supreme Court justice in history has ever faced impeachment, Samuel Chase in 1804. Thomas Jefferson thought Chase was biased in his rulings, and the Democratic Republicans tried to throw the book at Chase to get something, anything to stick. Ultimately, it went nowhere. And in the entire history of the United States, only 15 judges have ever faced impeachment, and out of those 15, only eight have ever actually been removed. Those are for offenses like perjury and even intoxication on the bench. Believe it or not, that's actually happened twice. And just like with the president, impeachment conviction for a judge or Supreme Court justice requires two thirds of the US Senate. So basically, as long as you're not an objectively terrible person or visibly drunk on the bench, you get to keep one of the most important gigs on the planet for life. But there are those in both parties who think that all of this isn't working. What I do think may make sense is, uh, if not term limits, then rotating judges to the appeals court as well. And I also think that when a person can be appointed to the Supreme Court and stay there for 40 years, my gosh, they might have outlived, uh, you know, six or seven presidents during that course of time. So what if people wanted to change this whole thing? to force Supreme Court justices to step down at a certain point. What would that even look like? Enter the 18-year term limit proposal. Under this system, each president would nominate a new Supreme Court justice every two years automatically, meaning it would take 18 years to reach the end of the cycle entirely. As the advocacy group Fix the Court says, appointments would become predictable exercises, not embarrassing partisan spectacles. Critics, however, argue that term limits for justices might encourage faulty decisions on the court. If they have no lifelong guarantee of a job, they might be inclined to give favor to industries where they may later work. The way there are hundreds of former members of Congress who are now working as lobbyists, but that is definitely a video for another day. That's why Fix the Court says, after a justice leaves the court, he or she could then go work for a lower court. It's a way to maintain impartiality while still ensuring good faith and reliable turnover on the highest court of the land. So you have the 18 year idea. There's also proposals every few years for an age requirement like they have in Canada, where Supreme Court justices cannot serve past the age of 75. Or something like the term limits imposed on the president who can't be elected to the office more than twice. But here's the biggest problem with all this. Out of more than 11,000 proposals in American history, we've only ever amended the Constitution 27 times. And it would likely take a constitutional amendment to update the 18th century idea of good behavior, yes, spelled with a U. Two thirds of the House of Representatives, two thirds of the US Senate, and three fourths of the states to agree. Sure, there are a few things that Congress can do without an amendment, but a constitutional amendment would likely be the only surefire way to force justices into shorter terms. Last year, in the face of mounting public pressure from Democratic voters, the Biden White House kind of begrudgingly put together a commission to examine Supreme Court reforms without actually endorsing very many of them. 
the commission found considerable bipartisan support for non-renewable limited terms. But when President Biden was asked directly whether or not he supports the idea of Supreme Court term limits, he bluntly answered no. Fans of the term limits idea say it would also prevent against irregular vacancies and instability that can come from sudden shifts in the court's balance. Both Donald Trump and Jimmy Carter were president for exactly 1,461 days. Donald Trump put three justices on the Supreme Court, Jimmy Carter put none. Part of the reason that this stubborn system of government has endured is because it's exactly that, incredibly stubborn. It is difficult to change the Constitution by design. And a constitutional amendment might be the only real shot at changing Supreme Court justice term limits once and for all, if that's what the American people want. Which means now in 2022, we might be closer than ever before.